mind, if we were going to fake something and try to get away with it, why would we fake it nine times? Why don't we just fake it once, you know? It never made sense to me, you know? But the Mythbusters, they busted every criticism. One of them being, of course, your footprints on the moon, you and Buzz, because they said the moon soil is dry, and therefore to have those prints appear as they are, the only way they would have to have moisture. That's a criticism. But the Mythbusters found out that the soil on the moon is still sharp. The grains are very sharp. They're not worn by weather. Therefore, they stick together, whereas the grain of soil on Earth that is worn by weather is rounded off and doesn't tend to do that. And when it came to the flag waving up there, as they said, they had to be air, they went into the vacuum chambers at Marshall Space Flight Center, and they proved that the waving of the flag was simply by you and Buzz trying to put it into the surface of the moon, and the fact that when an astronaut tried to put it in the surface of the moon, they got much more action out of it because they had no atmospheric restriction. So they just blew everything out of the park last night. But we would like to know from you, Neil, what it was like to step onto that moon and turn around and take your first steps and really learn how to walk and to traverse on the surface. Well, you know, uh, Jay, pilots take great pride in making smooth landings. <laughs> but they never really worry about making a smooth step off the airplane. <laughs> and so uh, we had a, a few people that thought it was going to be very difficult to uh, walk on the surface of them for whatever reasons they believe that to be true. And our simulations sometimes were a little bit difficult. But the human is remarkably adaptive. And what we found out was that by the time we had just stood around in the cockpit for a couple hours, we were completely adapted. And when we walked down off of the, of the craft onto the surface, we already were right at home. And uh, you'd really like it. <laughs> Thank you, Neil. Mike, do you have any questions you want to ask anybody here or add to? I'll tell you, Jay, one question that uh, people ask me a lot when I go speak is, why are there so many astronauts from Ohio? And, of course, I always tell them, well, just a lot of people looking for work outside the state. <laughs> but but uh, really, I, I guess I would throw the question out to these folks, but I think... Uh, you know, in my case, growing up in this, in this state, we heard a lot about guys like John Glenn, and you do rock, and I did a report on you, too. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and Neil Armstrong, so if you, if you grow up in Ohio, you, you hear a lot about these guys. And uh, so, you know, that, that influenced me a lot, and uh, that's why I went in that direction. But I'll ask the question to these folks if they have any other, maybe, uh, ideas why there are so many astronauts from Ohio. Who would you like to address that to? Anyone? Sonny? Sonny? <laughs> Why do we have so many? Well, I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I, I do want to reflect a little bit about walking. Um, it's pretty interesting. I was up in space for about six and a half months, and there was a time in there, uh, you know, it takes a little bit to get used to being in space. You're a little bit clumsy. All the shuttle crews that came up, you can notice right away that they're sort of bouncing around. We used to call the a couple guys who visit us a hurricane because they would move real slow and everything behind them would be crashed everywhere because they weren't quite used to floating around in space. But you get used to that pretty quickly. And it was weird. There was a, somewhere around the one month time frame, I looked down into the lab and the International Space Station, if you're not familiar, is like the size of a 747 or so. It takes about 15 seconds to fly from one end to the other. And I looked down the lab and I didn't even realize, I sort of forgot what it was like to walk. And I was thinking to myself, gosh, when I get home, I hope I remember what it's like to walk because I haven't done it in so long. And then it, you know, five more months passed by. But 
Luckily enough, the, the human body is really adaptable. When I got back down, I was, uh, had enough strength and muscle and, uh, and bone mass to, to walk off the shuttle, so that felt pretty good, a little bit disorienting. But um, this, this body we have is, is pretty amazing. If you, uh, one message I always tell kids, too, is um, you know, keep yourself healthy, and that, that's really the thing that allows you to do all these amazing things. So um, being in space is pretty neat, and I uh, hope a lot more of the young people out there get a chance to do it because we're all getting old up here. <laughs> You're still a baby, Sonny. Still a baby. Anyone else? I think there's a pretty strong uh, work ethic here in, in Ohio, and uh, I don't know if it's any more than any other place, but it sure is present, I think, and folks uh, uh, get used to that. Their parents have worked hard, and, and folks around them work hard, and maybe that's a little part of it. Well, you know, uh, not being from Ohio, I, I have to tell you, and I'm not saying this just because I'm in Cleveland tonight, but you guys, you're, you're the greatest, the people here. Anybody else? Yes, sir. I just have a, have a, a quick John Glenn story. And this, <laughs> and this, you know, because, you know, I think, I'm, I think Mike said it well. You know, you know John Glenn rocks. And, and he was, I think, an inspiration to a whole generation of, of uh, Ohio astronauts. And, and one of the cool things that I uh, had an opportunity to do was when I was on the International Space Station, uh, Dan Bursch and I did the second spacewalk out of the International Space Station, out of the U.S. Uh, airlock. And uh, it was February 20th, 2002. It was the 40th anniversary of Senator Glenn's flight. And so during the EVA, uh, and I think this was probably unprecedented, we actually did a public affairs event talking to Senator Glenn, and it was a great opportunity to, for Dan and I to actually talk about the significance of his flight and the significance of what we were doing building the International Space Station. It, it was just one of those uh, tremendous moments uh, in, in, my, in my life where I got a chance to to, to do something I really wanted to do, which was do a spacewalk, and to talk to, to one of the great inspirations of my life, which was John Glenn. I remember that. I remember reporting. Very good. And, uh, you know, I, I want to ask one question here. How many of you know who was the backup commander on Apollo 11 to astronaut Neil Armstrong? Who was his backup? How many people here know that? I have any? He knows. <laughs> I know there's also at least one other person here that knows. Oh, really? Okay, who's that? <laughs> James Lovell is what we're trying to say. Was a backup to Neil Armstrong. Hey, Jay. Yes, sir. I have one more comment about John Glenn's second flight. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay, Jim. Speaking of backup commanders. I'll this thing on somebody else. <laughs> no, I offered to be John Glenn's backup for his second flight. You did. They told me I was too young. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very. Along those lines, I have another story for John's second flight. I was the, the Capcom for that flight, and it was a real honor to work with John. It's just tremendous. Um, but we were always perplexed watching him in space. He had a flashlight around his wrist that kept floating around. And we're like, what's that all about? And now that I'm quite a bit older, I understand he was using that to get light on things so he could read it. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> That's right. Anyone else? Any question? I have a question. Yes, Dale. I've often heard people claim that the Great Wall of China could be seen from space. So here we have a big audience of people. Great so I'd like question. to question. Uh, how many people here in this group have, with their naked eyes from space, seen the Great Wall of China? One. Well, no. Would you like to how many comment people on it? I've heard it said it's the only man-built thing people can see from space. How many folks here have seen dozens of other things other than the Great Wall of China that human beings built from orbit. Yeah. <laughs> John, did you uh, see that? Or I don't know. I don't remember if you went over. You went over part of China. Did you go over the line? Uh, no, not that far north. Yeah, I didn't think so. Twenty-eight and a half degree inclination. It doesn't get up that high. 
but uh, you can see lots of things depending on the light. Mm -hmm. Very much depends on the light. You can see if you look up a sun line, you can see bridges across rivers and things like that, and, and uh, or you can see the wake if the, if the the wake of a ship if the light is right reflecting off of mm -hmm. it. You can see a V like that.